Namo Adida Fa. Good morning. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The third mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by sexual misconduct, I vow to cultivate responsibility and learn ways to protect the safety and integrity of individuals, couples, families, and society. I am determined not to engage in sexual relations without love and a long-term commitment. To preserve the happiness of myself and others, I am determined to respect my commitments and the commitments of others. I will do everything in my power to protect children from sexual abuse and to prevent couples and families from being broken by sexual misconduct. For our Dharma lessons, we've begun reading Ajahn Amaro's book, uh, Catastrophe Apostrophe on Dependent Origination. This morning we have a selection on two levels of scale. The teaching on dependent origination can be described as being on the basis of a momentary experience, or it can be presented as being on the basis of three lifetimes, those three being the immediate past, the present, and the immediate future. Both of these formats are found in the Pali Canon, the original teachings of the Buddha, and in the commentarial literature that arose in the centuries after the Buddha's time. The momentary interpretation describes the entirety of the 12 linked factors happening in rapid succession, effectively showing how the mind is born into experiences moment by moment. It happens as fast, as Ajahn Chah would put it, as falling out of a tree. He further pointed out that trying to track every nuance of the process would be like trying to count the branches that you are falling past during your accelerating descent. It's too quick to catch every detail, but you know without doubt that thud, when you hit the ground, it hurts. This momentary interpretation is espoused as a key teaching to not just by masters of the, of the Thai forest tradition like Ajahn Chah, but also, for example, by Western scholars such as Dr. Paul Dahlke. The three lifetimes interpretation breaks the 12 links into three groups. One, previous life. Ignorance conditions formations. Formations condition consciousness. This consciousness being seen as a relinking consciousness from one life to the next. Two, present life. Consciousness conditions mentality, materiality mind and body of the new life. Mentality and materiality conditions the six sense spheres. The six sense spheres con condition contact. Contact conditions feeling. Feeling conditions craving. Craving conditions clinging. Clinging conditions becoming. This becoming being seen as a gestation of another birth. Three, next life. Becoming conditions birth. Birth conditions old age and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. In his book, Dependent Origination, The Buddhist Law of Conditionality, Venerable P.A. Paiuto, who is an extremely thorough scholar, describes how he went through the whole Pali Canon and found that approximately one-third of the teachings on dependent origination referred to the three lifetimes interpretation while two-thirds describe the momentary representation. He also analyzed the commentaries and found it was the opposite. Two-thirds of the references in the commentaries described the three lifetimes interpretation, and one-third referred to the momentary interpretation. So, over the centuries, during the evolution of the commentaries, there was a drift 
toward the three lifetimes interpretation as a dominant meaning. Throughout the 20th century, Ajahn Buddhadasa, one of the most significant voices of the Southern School of Buddhism, made it a personal mission to point people to the suttas rather than to the commentaries. He felt they were far more reliable and liberating to take as a basis of the Buddha's teaching, and thus the wisest source of guidance. The majority of the suttas show the teaching on dependent origination to be something vitally relevant to our current lives, rather than a roadmap to events in regions well beyond our reach, to wit, a life that has gone by or a life that is yet to come. In his teaching, Ajahn Buddhadasa would strongly emphasize that the idea of past lives and future lives is not helpful, even to the point of being wrong because it could lead to superstition. He was trying to get the Buddhism of Thailand back on the middle way and away from the unconscious creation of self-view and superstition, a drift that is very common in the aging process of religions. In 1988, I had a chance to meet Ajahn Buddhadasa, a Western monk who was traveling with me was very concerned about Ajahn Buddhadasa's rigorous emphasis on the momentary interpretation and dismissal of the three lives one because that Western monk had strong perceptions about past lives and future lives. These seemed extremely real and common sense to him, as well as being mentioned very regularly in the canonical teachings. It was upsetting and confusing to him that Ajahn Buddhadasa in his writings and talks seemed to be saying that the idea of past lives and future lives was wrong or bad. When this monk asked him about this very point, I was quite touched by Ajahn Buddhadasa's response. He could discern the sincerity of this inquirer, and he was thus very sensitive and respectful towards him. He said, yes, of course those references are in the suttas, and I don't deny that they are valid. But in Thailand, blind belief and superstition, self-view around past and future lives, is so strong that I felt it my duty to emphasize things in the way that I have, because the current is so powerful in the other direction. That said, I would stress that there is no single correct way to understand dependent origination and to apply its principles. It is a map of a natural organic process, which can be seen to apply on many different levels, at the subatomic level, at the level of momentary human experience, over a span of several lifetimes, and even on a population-wide scale if one considers the effects of ignorance in societies, producing greater greed, hatred and delusion, and thereby suffering. The process of dependent origination obeys the laws of scale and variance. That is to say, just as the dendrite of a nerve ending, a tree and a river delta, all have the same silhouette at different scales. Dependent origination takes shape according to the same template at many different levels of our lives. For the purpose of this current exploration, in the spirit of Ajahn Buddhadasa and also Ajahn Chah, who valued Ajahn Buddhadasa's wisdom very highly, attention will be focused on the momentary aspects of the pattern, as this is what can be said to lead most directly to liberation, to the ending of dukkha. And that is what the Buddha repeatedly reminded us, was the entire purpose of his teaching. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be at peace. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me this morning.